Andy Nigel Smith. I'm the digital news editor at People Magazine. And here is Bruce Kirsch, the uh, subject of tonight's keynote. He's the EVP and president of People, People Espanol, as well as Entertainment Weekly, and he's also my boss. So, welcome, Bruce. So, be nice. Yeah, I gotta be nice, right? Wish me luck, everyone. Um, so this is a fireside chat, keynote speech. Uh, many in this room are no doubt familiar with who you are, and some people come up to you and introduce themselves earlier. Um, why don't we start for those who aren't fully familiar with, uh, with some of your background? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so on the creative side, I, I spent uh, most of my career at the ABC. Um, I oversaw strategy and business development for the network and for the television studio. And then after leaving ABC, I wanted to get closer to the creative community, so I went to work at an agency, um, the William Morris Agency, before it merged with William uh, with Endeavor. Um, and then started my own production company for a while, uh, worked uh, after that at ITV, um, and worked on a really fun and big TV show with Neil Patrick Harris. Um, and then for the last three years, have uh, started at Timing, and for those of you that uh, don't read the news, Time Inc. was acquired by Meredith. Um, that was last year. That was last year. And now I am part of Meredith. And I oversee the entire entertainment organization. So that includes People, Entertainment Weekly, and People in Espanol, as well as our television production studio, Forum Studios. Yeah, and we're here to talk about Forum Studios, which started out as Timing Productions. Correct. Back when you started at Timing. Correct. It was just starting up uh, about a year, maybe six months into me starting at Timing. Yeah. So what brought you over to Timing Now Meredith? I mean, we talked earlier over lunch about your love for the print form. Was it that exciting avenue that you could work you know, partly in that medium that brought you here? Well, I think part of it was storytelling. Obviously, Time Inc. is an iconic storyteller. Yeah. And um, I love brands. And, uh, you know, as you looked across the portfolio of brands from Time to Sports Illustrated to People to Entertainment Weekly uh, to even brands like Southern Living, I just felt that there was an opportunity to bring those stories to life in long form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what Forum Studios does. It brings uh, a lot of the articles, uh, a lot of the publications that are under the Merit banner and makes them into TV productions. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we look across the portfolio and we, we develop uh, storytelling and uh, we're primarily in the unscripted space. Uh, but uh, there's there's lots of IP that sits inside these brands that we're able to kind of bring to life. Yeah. Um, now you're behind the company's name, 4M Studios. You didn't go with the Meredith Production Company like the Time uh, and Production Company. What is behind the 4Ms? Um, well, if anybody looks at the Meredith logo, which uh, the company spent a lot of time and energy developing, it's actually a combination of 4Ms. And so I thought that it would be really interesting if we were able to kind of adapt that approach and then bring it to life with a name of the studio. Um, so that was, I pitched it, and everybody liked it, yeah. and it stuck. It, it stuck. And so we're excited that we were able to kind of transfer the name and then expand the portfolio. It's great. So, uh, Time and Productions, uh, now 4M's only been around for two years, but you've already achieved a lot. I'm just gonna read out some statistics to make you look good if that's okay. Sure. So, People <laughs> Magazine Investigates, season three is in production. Uh, you the story of Diana, which aired on ABC, correct? Correct. That premiered with the highest ratings for ABC in that time slot in nearly a decade. And it's follow-up, the story of the Royals garnered close to five million viewers. Royals does very well for us to be yes, we love well, Royals. So I'm not surprised. Um, Sports Illustrated True Crime is in the production with Jerry Burkheimer TV. Uh, here in Space, the PV sets show adapted from Time's digital series one and Emmy. And what year was that? That was uh, last year. Last year, okay. And the one that I'm most enticed by is your collaboration with Apple TV. Obviously, we can't talk a lot about it because it's Apple, but the show's called Home. Um, anything you can tease about that? Well, it's the first unscripted show that Apple has purchased. 
So uh, we're really excited to be in business with Apple. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of conversations about Apple, um, but uh, it's a, a remarkable idea that I can't tell, talk much about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk about what it is, which is a first for your company, because it's the first um, that's uh, first production that's not tied specifically to a merited brand. Correct, yeah. correct. And, you know, so the, the strategy has many layers for our TV business. Uh, when we first started, the idea was to dive into these iconic brands, look across the portfolio and see what works. So, for example, with people, as you just uh, referenced, uh, Royals is a very big part of what we do and what we cover. So it was organic to launch several Royals specials. Crime as well yeah. is another big category um, that we now have three crime shows on. And all were branded under the people name. Um, and as we moved across, we thought we would do the same. But the, the secondary opportunity was to start developing just great ideas and great storytelling. And so Home was one of those examples where we didn't root it in any brand. We know that it can tie to one of the brands at some point because of kind of the nature of the story that we're telling. And, um, and so we're going to continue looking down that path now. Anything specifically in the works? Um, nothing, nothing that I can actually talk about, but there's definitely um, a lot of ideas that are now coming to us that we see connected to a brand, but doesn't have to have a brand front and center. Okay. And not, not to get too micro, but I want to talk a little about the pitching and the how, uh, given that you have done so much in the course of two years with the output. Um, that probably obviously has to do with the wealth of inspiration that Meredith brands give. Sure. I mean, there's so much to call from, but, but how does the distillation of that happen? What's the process? Well, we, uh, when I came in, one of the things that, you know, there's lots of creative people sitting here, and one of the, one of the things that I appreciate is the fact that we have to collaborate. And if I would have walked in and said, we are going to do a people crime show, it's mine, here's how we're going to do it, um, we probably would have failed right out of the gate. And so we've created teams within the organization around each brand that not only know the DNA of the brand, but really understand whatever category that we're trying to develop around. And so I think that's part of the secret sauce of how we've been able to develop such great storytelling, whether you know it's Entertainment Weekly, which is a pop culture brand, so the idea was how do we create our version of 30 for 30 in the pop culture space? And that brand is the authority that can do that, but I needed the editorial staff to help us you know, to guide us through that. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we've done, is we've created these teams around every brand that really, really love being part of this process, because if you've worked in print for 20 years, this is your chance to work in television. If you work in digital, this is your chance to work in television or long-form storytelling. Um, and it's just excited a lot of people. Yeah, it was this mantra you were talking earlier to me about uh, everybody has a seat at the table. Everyone has a seat at the table. Everyone has a seat at the table. Yeah, and you really do practice that. A lot of my superiors at People Magazine, they do exactly what you said. They not only appear you know, in the actual series, but they are behind some of the ideas. And yeah, it's true. I mean, on the People side, our editor-in-chief, Jess Cable, is not only an executive producer of our series, he is, you know, um, he appears, so he's talent in our series as well. Yeah. Um, and, and so that just gets them a little bit more invested as we go through the process. Fantastic. And one brand we didn't talk about is the Life brand. Yeah. I know I'm bouncing around a little here, but um, that brand I just find so fascinating because there's so much untapped potential there with a lot of the, we're talking about um, troves of unpublished photos and stories that you're tapping into for Possible talk a bit about yeah, well, I mean, the, the Life brand is not a published brand the way it used to be. We we do publish um, what we call bookazines, which are high-end books that we sell uh, throughout the course of the year. So the brand still resonates with a pretty large audience. We, we also have over 2 million Instagram followers which is really interesting to hear when the brand is you know, kind of not front and center. Um, but what we've discovered after bringing in an 
the archivists is that there's hundreds and hundreds of untold stories that we've never published. And so as we look for inspiration, we now have stories that haven't been published. We have photos that haven't been published. Um, and so as we look at developing, whether it's high-end docs or scripted programming, we, we have the story behind the photo, we have the photographer that shot the photo, and then we have the story that wasn't published about the photo. And so all of those start creating really interesting storytelling devices for us, and uh, we're really going, we're going deep into that brand. Yeah. About the pitch process to studios like ABC, Discovery, and all these companies that you've uh, collaborated with, um, do you pitch a full package including editorial possibilities, cover stories, or is it just purely based on the, uh, the product that you're creating? Yeah, so that's probably one of another piece as to why we've been so successful. So early this year, we'll produce <coughs> 60 hours of content, uh, whereas a few years ago it was only about five. Um, and part of it is great storytelling with obviously um, iconic IP behind it. But the fact that we have the ability to market and promote our shows goes a long way. And as we all have seen, we make great product, we sell it to a network, and then they don't market it, and no one watches it, and then the show goes away. So we just put ourselves in a much better position because we have the ability to help the network through the process of promoting the show. So for our royal shows, as an example, uh, not only is our royal staff connected to the show, our royal staff is writing about the show both in print and digital, and then we promoted the show on the cover of People Magazine, and you that's real estate you just can't buy. Yeah. And the, the, the ABC studios, all those places, they really respond to that. Yes, right? and all the networks uh, have responded uh, in a really, really positive way because it's, you know, it, it gives the show an added chance in the marketplace. Yeah. Scripted programming, is that something you ever want to venture into? Yeah, so we, um, we're looking at scripted programming. The company as a whole has been in the movie business, not from the standpoint of production, but from a licensing standpoint. We, many articles across Time and Sports Illustrated have been optioned for movies, um, but as we look at our own production, we probably won't produce uh, scripted, but we'll partner with companies. And you can imagine many stories around the life brand being uh, turned into scripted projects. And then on the people side, we've played in two categories. We've played in the category of um, made-for-TV movies, uh, and whether you, we all see those movies on Lifetime and other, other networks, and some of them are based on stories that have appeared in People Magazine, and then at the same time, as we're discovering stories for our unscripted side of the business, we're in some instances acquiring life rights yeah. to then potentially take those stories out into the scripted world. Okay. More about the future of the company. Um, what are some of the untapped married brands that are so many yeah. that you want to tap into for potential? Well, life is one, as we've already discussed. Yeah. Uh, Better Homes is another really, really interesting brand that um, resonates in kind of so many categories. Uh, so we're, we're spending a fair amount of time on Better Homes. You, uh, there used to be a show called The Better Show, which was a syndicated show that Better Homes used to produce, uh, but that's no longer on the air, so we're exploring that. Uh, we're exploring brands like All Recipes, which is the number one online food um, digital destination, and we think that there could be opportunities in that category. And then we are looking even into our, some of our digital programming uh, to then translate that into some of some new storytelling. So People Now, which is a daily show on people.com, uh, is now being distributed on our own stations. Meredith owns a fair amount of local stations. And so People Now Weekend is now being produced for the Meredith stations. Amazing. Where are those stations? Are? They're all over the country, um, everywhere from Nashville to Las Vegas. OK, very cool. Well, I want to open it up to the audience for questions, if anybody has anything for, for Bruce. Um, Great. Yeah. Very fun. First question. Yeah. 
Super locked in right now and loving all of this. You go to people.com every day? <laughs> every day. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to say every day. So, <laughs> all so excited to be here. Um, and I just, I guess this is kind of a kind of a large question to answer, and it's not really that specific, but with the transition to digital and in your, both of your careers, I guess, to be directed to you guys, how have you seen that transition impact your content? Obviously, you know, documentary, long form content is going to be Well, let me first start with the fact that we recognize that the industry is changing. Um, I, when I was at ABC, I won an Emmy for launching the first uh, platform to deliver long-form television on the internet. So uh, at, at People, I'll just use People as the example, People, we serve a 13-year-old girl to your grandmother. Yeah, and and we and I, mean, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully, she buys it in Houston. Yeah. Um, so, so we have the ability to kind of look across all of those. So we have a team that that produces our Snapchat Discover channel. We have a team that produces People.com and People Digital, which then is distributed everywhere from Oath to Apple News, and then we have our physical magazine and we have our OTT network, so People TV. So we recognize that we need to be everywhere, and as we look at stories, we look at stories for not one medium, but hopefully multiple mediums. So for example, when a crime story is pitched, we're obviously looking at it for the general brand, and then we look at it to see, is there an opportunity to take that into television? What form of television can we take it into? Could we produce a piece of that for ourselves, whether it's for people.com or for people TV? So we're constantly looking at, at how content comes in and then how we can develop it for kind of any medium. So it doesn't necessarily have to be longevity of a running series or more versatility in where you can show it? I mean, look, longevity is it's always, always great. Where, where we would probably focus more is how does it organically fit into a content bucket that we serve? So we serve entertainment enthusiasts. We serve, and this is just people, but if we look at the whole company, we pretty much serve every audience, but as we look at people, we would serve an entertainment enthusiast, we would serve a crime enthusiast, we would serve a kind of human interest enthusiast, uh, and so on and so on. And so what we typically look at is like, how does it, how are we gonna serve our audience? Because that's a big part of how we connect it to the brand. And then if we don't connect it at all, then it's how are we gonna promote this? And so Jess Cagle, who, who runs People, always talks about what's the headline. Yeah, you know, so, so we're constantly thinking about like what's the headline around the story that then would get you interested, your mom interested, your sister interested, your cousin, your grandma. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. You're welcome. Do you look for content partners, and if you do, do you want them to come with uh, ideas that are tied to your vertical brands, or look at content in your archives and say, we can expand from there based on relationships, or? So, both. So, um, in some instances, when we were first starting, we actually outsourced all of our production services. So, you know, that's a good business for a lot of people. Um, and so in that instance, we were just looking for groups and producers and storytellers that could take our idea and make it better. So for example, on our Royals projects, we partner with Maggie Vision. And you know, Maggie Vision is an award-winning uh, production entity and, and they're our partner on that. Um, so that was one way. Uh, on the flip side, uh, we're, we're looking for experts in categories. So for example, uh, I'm really focused on formats. I want to launch formats because they travel around the world. And so one of the areas that I've been focused on is gaming. 
because it's very hot in the marketplace. And we have a lot of games, specifically in people, we have Puzzler. And it's, you know, it's only a crossword puzzle, but if we take it out, our audience really, really gets upset. And so, so I brought in game show producers to develop a game show. And we partnered with game show producers. And then in some instances, we'll just, you know, we'll, great idea will come in and we'll partner with uh, whether it's an individual producer or a production company. So we're really one of the few that are open for business across the board. How far along is the game show? The game show's far along. Yeah. We're, we've already pitched it and we have interest. So that's like a, been a really, really fun program to put together. Are you going to get into the dating game? Uh, not at this point. Yeah, I, we like the match. Yeah, they, they do. They do well in our book. So they do better online. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Oh. My name is Ashley. I'm a documentary director producer. Obviously, y'all have your hands quite a bit into what's happening with the Royals and with a lot of crime drama. But kind of looking forward over the next 12, 18, 24 months, what kind of categories do you see that are untouched or maybe unrealized in the unscripted world, such as conservation or wildlife or, I mean, what sectors do you see are a possibility going forward? Well, look, a lot of it's dictated by what the market's asking. Um, so, in some instances, we'll make the market by leveraging one of our brands. So, that's why we're deep into life, because I think the life brand as a whole has many variables of storytelling that no one has seen. Um, and so, my sense is that's going to, it doesn't answer your question, but my sense is that's where we're going to go. Um, but A Year in Space is a great example. Who would have thought that the Kelly brothers uh, would, would agree to allow us to document them for an entire year um, and then someone would actually buy it and then it would win it. I mean, like all of those things were completely unknown. So in some instances, we'll just take a flyer and we'll produce it ourselves. And we've done that in many cases um, on the Time and Sports Illustrated side, but my sense is we'll start looking at Time the same way and maybe take a few chances and then just light up some docs that we just want to do. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Um, so in the last few years, we've seen really, really large shifts in the way that we're uh, talking about diversity and talking about gender equality, and specifically something like people. How has the, la how have the last two years and the power of the <coughs> movement changed what you speak about, how you push forward, the narrative that exists, or uh, yeah, just how it changes your day to day, your company structure, what we're talking about. Um, well, it obviously changes the day-to-day -day of everybody's conversation. Um, I'm not going to talk specifically about people, but I would say the company as a whole obviously um, has looked at a lot of those issues. Um, you could you know, read Time Magazine. And it's front and center on the covers a lot. But um, I would say EW has gone very deep into um, it because of GLOW um, and has, has really, really, you know, highlighted that show and uh, brought it to life, I would, I think, in a new way and maybe even have helped that show. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is, you know, a constant theme, uh, but I can't kind of pinpoint it to like, oh, this is the only way we're doing it. Yeah. With, with so, many, so many of us being content creators, we just sort of Come right at this question. So, what opportunities are there with Meredith for independent content creators to present their subject matter and, and their work uh, for consideration? Yeah, so we were just talking about that. It's a little bit of a tricky slope, I would say, because we don't take unsolicited submissions. Um, so, uh, a lot of ideas come through the agencies or the lawyers, um, and they'll hit us that way. Uh, but we're open for business, right? Like we want good ideas, uh, and we want good ideas to be pitched to us across the board. So while you're content creators and you're focused on long form, linear, scripted, unscripted um, television, we the entry point might be an article in a magazine, 
And so what we've seen, if you, if you go back to the early days of the unscripted business, even when I was an independent producer, one of the first things I did was Thursday, uh, or I would get my People magazine and I would flip through it to see who, what stories they were highlighting so I could then start calling the writers to then see if I could get the life rights to then go do that show. And so that is still, we're still like a development hub for a lot of companies. Uh, obviously, we're a little smarter now, and we're getting in front of some of those things, but, but there's an opportunity just to pitch great stories to all of our brands that then they would potentially feature, and then that starts the path to creating a documentary or a scripted show. How much does the popularity of a given article factor into you wanting to adapt it into something more? Yeah, it does. I mean, we've looked at, so there are, there are several articles that we um, continuously, or categories that we continuously look at. Uh, you know, you're judged in some instances by what you write and how many people look at it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so the great, the great part about that piece of the puzzle is we have analytics that we could look at and we could see what stories resonate and then how do we expand that story. And it doesn't, when I say story, it could be an individual, it could be a family, um, and in some instances, you might have a, a really interesting family that lives right around the block from here that could be an interesting story to us and then that, six months later, we could be pitching that as a TV show. <laughs> Because networks like to see stories featured in our magazines first. How many cover stories have you gotten out of uh, 4M Productions Productions? How many cover stories? What do you mean? Well, like a people cover story that's based on something that you produced. Uh, I don't know the number. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sure. Um, so you talked about OTT for people. Have you thought about that in the other? Yeah, so, so we've launched, uh, so People TV is the most expansive OTT network that we've launched thus far. We'll produce uh, somewhere between 150 and 200 hours for that one network. Um, and then we also launched, so that's an ad supported network. Um, and then on the other side, we launched Sports Illustrated TV, which is a subscription. Uh, OTT network, and um, we're continuously exploring if there's other brands that will resonate in that space. Uh, the competition is getting fierce, and we we recently just announced even for People TV that we're going to lean more into live programming, even though we'll continue to produce kind of longer form. Uh, reunions and cover stories and other uh, categories. Uh, the OTT world is really, really rabbit around live, and so we're just going to deliver more of that on top of everything else we're doing. This may be a little bit on the nose, but um, I was just curious how you might envision integrating the LGBTQ content within your umbrella of what you guys are doing. I mean, obviously there's already, you know, there's already some built in, um, but I was just curious how you envision a potential future with that, expanding into that area. Look, I, uh, I'm, not sh I'm probably not going to answer the question okay. correctly. Um, <laughs> there's no wrong answer. Because if there's a great story, we're going to feature it. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're writing stories that our writers want to write that they believe in, and so whether it's a story uh, around a dog or uh, you know a same-sex couple, it it's just it's great storytelling. So I don't know if they delineate it that way. Yeah, I mean like, I don't mean to be like check the box. No, no, I hear, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bruce, for coming. Out to